Proudly, we hail. From New York City, where the American stage begins, here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station for your army to bring you this story as proudly we hail the United States Army. Our story is entitled, The Second Look. This is the story of a young man who finds out what goes into the makings of a soldier, as proudly we hail the United States Army. Our curtain will rise in just a moment. But first, the job of the future is here today, Army Anti-Aircraft Artillery. Become a member of one of the Army's fastest growing organizations. There's unusual opportunity offered to you in this new and exciting field of Nike, guided missiles, radar, and electronics. If you have a high school diploma or equivalent, you may choose the special course which you want to attend prior to being assigned to an anti-aircraft unit. This is done under the Army's Reserved for You program, which guarantees you the technical course of your choice before you enlist. Under a new option plan, you may request Army anti-aircraft artillery and upon completion of basic and advanced training, be assigned to one of the anti-aircraft units which guards US cities and strategic defense areas. See your local Army recruiter and learn how you can ensure your future by becoming a member of the command with a future. And now your army presents the proudly we hail production, The Second Look. That's yes, Sergeant Bill Parker's the name. And I suppose you're wondering what a soldier is doing here in a county courthouse. Well, I'm waiting for something that's going to happen any moment now. Something pretty important. Sure, anything that happens in the courtroom is usually important. But this, uh, well, let me explain. The whole thing began about a year ago. I was, and still am, the post special services supervisor. And one day, Corporal Jim Smith, my assistant in charge of sports. Hey, Sarge, I'm going to take the truck and pick up the team now. Okay, who are you playing tonight? Johnstown Blue Sox. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah for high school kids, they play pretty good baseball. Oh, uh, yeah, but their manager, Mr. Taylor, has a lot to do with it, you know. Uh, well, I'll tell you what, Smitty. Mm -hmm. Since this is the first game of the season, I'll come along and help you get it off to a good start, huh? Okay, Sarge. Truck's waiting. Uh, hello there, Mr. Taylor. How are you? Oh, fine, Sergeant Parker. How's your team? Good shape? Yeah, sure. With calisthenics every morning, what do you expect? They'd better be, because the Blue Sox are going to take them over this year. Oh, how come? You got Mickey Mantle playing for you now? No, but I got a new second baseman. Name's Taylor. Bert Taylor. Oh, is that so? Uh, Taylor? Well, that's the same... Uh... <laughs> that same name, all right. He's my son. Well, I don't remember ever meeting him. I guess not. He's been away to boarding school the last few years. Uh -huh. Come on, I'll introduce you. Hey, Bert, come here a minute. Pretty big for his age, huh? Hey, he must weigh 180. How old is he? 17. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what's up, guy? Want you to meet Sergeant Bill Parker. Special services out at the post. I'm mighty glad to meet you, Bert. Hi. Oh, <laughs> pardon me while I pull back a stump. That's some handshake, kid. Yeah. So you're going to help to knock us off this year, huh? Yeah, and we will. I'm going out to warm up. Uh, well, what do you think of him, Sergeant? Yeah, he's a nice boy, Mr. Taylor. With muscles like those, I'm going to have to dig up some extra padding for our fielder's gloves. I can see that. Well, that wasn't the only thing I could see. Mr. Taylor didn't seem as though he was quite convinced of his pride in his son. Though I wasn't sure why. The kid seemed to be all right, that first look. But it's the second look that counts. And that second look... Could... But uh, I'm getting ahead of myself. After the game got underway that evening, I left to check on some other special services activities. And I soon forgot about Bert Taylor. But it wasn't to be for long. Good morning, Sergeant Parker. Morning, Smitty. Hey, I've got a requisition here for uh, ten archery sets. Uh, you can pick them up at the warehouse. Yeah, okay. Corporal Smith, it's a beautiful spring morning. You'll soon be eligible for sergeant's stripes. And you're standing there like a hanging hound dog. 
Explain. Oh, it's nothing, Sarge. We just got off to a bum start last night, that's all. Oh, so the Blue Sox won, huh? Yeah. What's the matter? Wasn't your old crystal ball working right for you? It wasn't that. I made my moves okay. The guys played okay, but that that kid, that Taylor's son. Oh, him. Yeah. So he's as good as his dad said he was, huh? Well, he's not a bad player, but... You saw how big he is? Yeah. Well, he knocked out my first baseman on a bunt play, spilled my second baseman hard on a force out. I had to pull them both out of the game to my best men. Well, accidents will happen, as long as they weren't serious. Well, they weren't, but I got a hunch there wasn't anything accidental about him either. You think he did it deliberately? I'd say so, yeah. Well, you were there, Smitty. But aren't you jumping to conclusions? I don't think his father would allow him to pull anything like that. Well, I would have thought not either, but... Uh, Sergeant Parker! Yes, sir, Captain Jackson. Oh, hello, Colonel Smith. How'd the Look game it. go last night? Oh, seven to five, favor the Blue Sox. Sir. Is that right? Well, we'll have to put a stop to that, eh, Corporal? We certainly will, sir. My name isn't Smith. <laughs> I'll go get those archery sets now, Sergeant. Uh, Sergeant, I wanted to talk to you about the Army Day we're having shortly. Uh, yes, sir. I've got a tentative schedule of events drawn up already for the open house uh, Good. periods. Good. Now, there's a chance I might be able to get a Walker tank that's been through Korea brought in. I thought it'd be a good idea to display it to the public. What do you think? Well, that's fine, sir. Got to be something different. That's what I thought. I'll see if I can finalize it. In the meantime, you figure out a good place for its location in the event we do get it. Okay? Right, sir. From baseball to tanks. Well, just as the name implies, special services. You never know what's going to turn up next. And you can be sure, whatever it is, it won't be dull. But sometimes there are problems. And there was one developing then. One that I had to face up to a few days later. I was in my barracks room that evening, and I heard the truck pull up outside and drop the baseball team off. All right, come on. Well, a few minutes later, Smitty came into my room. Sarge, would you call me a spoil sport? No. A poor loser? No, of course not. Do you think I can't call a spade when I see one or that I got a creeping imagination or something? Oh, come on, come on. What's eating you? It's not what's eating me. It's what's beating me. Or us. That guy, Bert Taylor. Oh, him again. Yeah, yeah, him. My catcher, he hits in the arm with his bat. My pitcher, he beans while he's running out of base hit, and he tries to start a fight with my shortstop. Because if this keeps up, I'll have more guys on sick calling on my team. I'm sorry. I it's just had to blow it off, that's all. Yeah, sure. Well, what am I supposed to do, take it all in? No, I think that along about here, a little conference wouldn't do any harm. I'll tell you what. Hmm? Let me carry the ball on that. We'll see what happens. <laughs> Well, as I said before, it's the second look that counts, the one that goes inside. I would have to find out about this boy and see what made him tick under the brawn and bravado. The following Sunday, I hopped into my car and drove out to Taylor's home. As I drove up before the house, I saw Bert in the front yard, stripped to the waist. Uh, hi, Bert. Hi. <laughs> well, now I know how you got those muscles. Hey, uh, how much do those barbells weigh? 175. Uh, that's a lot of barbell to be playing around with. Well, if you think it's playing around, why don't you try lifting them? Well, me? What's the matter? Are you afraid to try it? In my job at Special Services, I have to look after the post-gymnasium. So I get a chance now and then to practice barbell lifting. But it was a hot Sunday afternoon. I wasn't especially anxious to get all heated up. Besides, 175 pounds was a weight I'd never attempted before. But I knew there was something a little more involved here. <laughs> I thought so. It's too much for you. Well, maybe. But there's one way to find out. Let me at them. I took my grip and then started to lift. Yeah, they were heavy, all right. And I had to put out with everything I had. I just about got them to the point where I knew I could raise them over my head when... Go on, give up. That's too much weight for you. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. Maybe you're right, Bert. Better do some more practicing before you challenge me. Challenge? Yeah, sure, Bert. Sure. Uh, tell me, is your dad around? He's in the back, cutting grass. Oh, thanks. Hello, Mr. Taylor. Uh, Sergeant Parker. This is a surprise. Well, I hope you don't mind my dropping in like this, but uh, I wanted to have a chat with you. Sure, glad to. Come on, sit down. Yeah, care for a lemonade? I don't mind if I do. Yeah, here you are. Thanks. Hey, that hits the spot. Especially after trying to lift 175 pounds of barbell. Oh, Bert talking to trying them? Yeah. Hey, it goes in a lot for that bodybuilding stuff. I wonder why. 
He's plenty big enough as it is. There are a lot of things to wonder about him. While we're on the subject, Sergeant, I want to apologize for his behavior on the playing field, your men. Oh, then you've noticed it, huh? Yes, I... I know Corporal Smith has been plenty burned up about it, and I don't blame him. I, I've been hoping Bert would get over it by seeing the good example of sportsmanship you army men always set on the playing field or off. But, well, I think I'll have to have a talk with him. Well, has he always been like this? No, I'd say about the last two years or so. You know, he's been attending the school up north, and he's been having trouble there, too. I I can't figure out what's happened to the boy. I, I just can't. Well, anyway, let's get down to what you wanted to talk about, Sergeant. Enough of my troubles. Oh, we've already talked about it, Mr. Taylor. Oh, then you... Yeah. I thought I'd better let you know. Uh, this is the kind of situation that might mess up the whole series. Now, we've always enjoyed playing the Blue Sox, and we'd like to see it continue, but... Uh... Uh, of course. I... I'll try to straighten him out. I'll, I'll try. Don't worry, Sergeant. Yeah, sure. Well, so long, Mr. Taylor. See you at the next game. When you've been in the Army as long as I have, you get to learn about men. And from what I saw of Bert especially with those barbells. I thought I was beginning to understand him. I knew it might take time before I was sure, but I still hoped his father would be able to straighten him out. Though sometimes the closer you are, the less able you are to get a perspective. But at the next game between the Blue Sox and our team, I went along. And before the game got underway... Hey, Sergeant Parker. Yes, Bert, what is it? Listen, if you've got something to pick on me for, why don't you come to me? Well, I didn't pick on you, as you call it. Oh, come on, cut the stalling. You went and blabbed to my old man the other day, didn't you? I wouldn't call it blabbing. Maybe you don't, but I do. Listen, Sergeant, I'm big enough to handle my own affairs. The next time you got anything to say about me, don't go behind my back. Now, hold it, hold it, boy. There's nothing I said to your father that I wouldn't say to you. Well, why didn't you, then? When the time comes, I will. You can bank on that. Yes, yeah, sure, but if you do, keep it short. The game started soon after that. And it was in the first inning that it happened. We were at bat, and Smitty, who had been on first with a walk, tried to steal second. He slid into the bag, and Bert came down with the ball right on the back of Smitty's neck with full force. Well, I jumped out of the dugout, but before I could get there, Mr. Taylor was there ahead of me. I've had enough, Bert. Go on back to the bench. You're out of the game. Then, for the first time, I saw a new Bert, the real one. And from what I saw, if anyone ever needed help, it was he. You are listening to the proudly we hail production, The Second Look. We'll return to our story in just a moment. Young fella, how about this? Hurry on down to the local Army recruiting station. That's right, I said the Army recruiting station. Since you have to plan for military service, your Army recruiter is a good man to know. Here's why. Only the Army offers you so many different ways to choose how you'll serve before you enlist. For example, He'll show you how high school graduates can pick their own technical training from more than 150 different courses. He'll get you a written guarantee that a place in the class is reserved for you all before you enlist. Or your recruiter can get you into the Army branch of your choice. Armor, artillery, infantry, engineers. Name the branch you want, and it's yours. Or your Army recruiter can even help you get your choice of overseas assignment. Army personnel travel to many exciting places all over the world. Believe me, if you want to choose the way you serve before you enlist, your Army recruiter offers you the best deal in town. See him right away. There's no obligation. Get the facts on your future. You'll get choice, not chance, from your Army recruiter. You're listening to Proudly We Hail, and now we present the final act of The Second Look. And so when he laid that heavy tag on Corporal Smith, there was a wholesale blowing of tops. His own teammates walked off the field and refused to play anymore. So the game was called. And that's the way it was, Captain Jackson. Hmm, it's too bad. These inter-sports contests between the Post and Town have always been a fine way to promote good relations. Yes, sir, they have. It's good for our men to know the people of the town appreciate them as human beings as well as soldiers. Yeah, I'm sure of it. And that's why I think it might be a good idea to suspend the games. Suspend them, sir? Mm -hmm. Just for a while, in the interest of harmony. 
until a solution can be found. What do you think? Well, sir, here's the way I look at it. I believe a person should learn to live with the community rather than the community learning to live with him, like we do in the Army. Mm -hmm. And you think... I that... think Bert will learn, sir. He's beginning to already. But if we suspend the games, he may not get a chance. I see. All right, Sergeant, if you think so. You've been closer to the situation than I have. Carry on as you see fit. Thank you, sir. Now, to get on to something else, we are getting that tank sent to us for the weekend exhibit. Oh, glad to hear it, sir. Should prove to be very interesting. It is. They sent me a list of the tank's crew's names and the awards they received for their combat action, plus a story of how they earned their medals. Uh -huh. Thanks, great reading. Here, listen to this. The tank commander, a lieutenant platoon leader, stood up in his open turret with his tank's right tread was inoperative and directed his fire and an advancing force of at least company size. Well, it did make a great story. Listening to the exploits of our army men in Korea, fighting against overwhelming odds, against a treacherous enemy, but still fighting with honor, never stooping to dishonorable means to achieve their objective. And as I listened to the captain, an idea began to form in my mind. Or maybe I should say the beginning of an yes, idea. Yes, Sergeant, these were men. That is, they are men. There's a good possibility the Pentagon will arrange for these same crew members of the tank to be here this weekend. Well, I hope so, sir. I'd certainly like to meet them. I do. In any event, arrange to have somebody stationed at the tank to tell a story of it and its crew to the spectators that come this weekend. Right, sir. It'll be either Corporal Smith or myself. Fine. Well, I've got to get over to headquarters for a staff meeting. See you later, Sergeant. Yes, sir. Hello, Mr. Taylor. Sergeant Parker. Oh, Sergeant Parker, how are you? Oh, I'm fine, thanks. Uh, say, Mr. Taylor, are you having a get-together with your team any time within the near future? Oh, yes, as a matter of fact, after that fiasco yesterday, I thought I'd better have one of them tonight. Uh-huh. Where? Well, they'll be on my front porch at 8 o'clock. Well, do you mind if I drop in on you about then? Oh, not at all. I was going to call you anyway to apologize. Oh, there's no need to do that. Everything will work out all right. Well, I'll see you then, 8 o'clock. It's not a very pleasant task that I've set for myself, but it's one that I've got to do. I... Oh, hello, Sergeant Parker. Uh, hi. I'll just grab a corner of the steps here, Mr. Taylor. Don't let me interrupt. Okay, Sergeant. Now, fellas, I want to keep this team together. And I know now there's only one way to do it, even if it hurts. I've already talked to Bert. Yeah, and it's all right with me. If you can't behave like men... Bert, I'll handle them. I've asked Bert to leave the team. Joe Perkins will take his place at second. That okay with you, fellas? Uh, while the team put its heads together, I kept my eye on Bert. Outwardly, he didn't seem to care if he was on the team or not. But I could see that he was upset, because the team was giving him the cold shoulder, ignoring him completely. Okay, Mr. Taylor. Yeah. Well, okay, fellas. It's settled then. Okay, fellas, that's all. Uh, Mr. Taylor, you mind if I say a word or two? Not at all, Sergeant. Oh, thanks. Say, fellas, uh... I'm glad you made the decision to continue. And I know the post team will be too. But uh, that's not what I came here to tell you. As you probably know, the post is holding an Army Day open house this weekend, and uh, I want to invite you all to come out Saturday morning as my guests. I have some things I especially want to show you. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah. yeah sure. Uh, yeah. All right, fine, fine. And uh, since I know most of you are planning on enlisting as soon as you're out of high school, I think maybe you'll get something extra out of it. Uh, now, my invitation goes for everybody here. Everybody. As I spoke, I looked directly at Burke. But he turned his back on me and walked into the house. And it was then I figured my idea was going to fail. Because if there was anyone I wanted to show up at that open house, it was Bert. On Saturday morning, the whole team arrived bright and early, but no Bert. Hi, Sarge. We're all here. Uh, okay, fellas. All right, first let's go over to that tent where all the weapons used in Army training are on display. Well, I got quite a kick out of their enthusiasm as they looked at the equipment. But I sort of kept watching out the door for Bert, hoping that he'd still show up. This is the 50 caliber, water-cooled, heavy machine gun. By the time the fellas had seen everything in the tent, I gave up hope. It was one time in my life that I was really disappointed. Hey, that was great, Sarge. Hey, where do we go now, huh? Well, let's go over to the parade ground and take a look at the haymaker. Haymaker? 
Yeah, that's the nickname of a medium tank that landed the haymaker of a blow at the enemy in Korea. The very same tank you see there. Uh, let's hear Corporal Smith tell us about it. For 12 hours, they stuck to their disabled tank, fighting off wave after wave of enemy infantry, until finally there were no more. After partially repairing their damaged tread, they hobbled along toward an ordnance repair station in the rear. Now, on their way, they happened upon a badly wounded enemy soldier. They could have gone on to leave him to die, but they didn't. They picked him up and brought him back to the aid station. See, even in war, a man's game, there is such a thing as fair play. The names of that crew are engraved in brass plates here on the side of the tank. Take a good look at them, and if you will, remember them. They helped to make it possible for us to be standing here now like this, in peace. That's all. Okay, fellas. Now, if you like, you... Hey, Bert, I didn't see you. How long have you been standing here? I've been here a while. Well, I'm glad you came. Oh, as I was about to say, fellas, uh, you can go inside the tank and take a look if you want to. After that... I drove them to the machine gun field firing range. Then the rocket launcher range. And the 81 millimeter mortar range. And then back to an area where a dry run hand grenade throwing demonstration was set up. Hey, this is the same hand grenade used in Korea, right, Sarge? Yes, Perkins. Now listen to the commands. Stand. Open. Just as the soldiers prepared to throw, the wind, which was pretty strong at the moment, blew Perkins' hat from his head out into the field. Throw! Instinctively, Perkins chased after his hat just as the throwers let go. But Bert, like a flash, was out on the field and with a fullback's headlong leap, knocked Perkins into a depression in the ground, jumping on top of him to protect him from what Bert thought would be the shrapnel of the exploding grenades. But, of course, there weren't any explosions. Hey, Bert, what are you doing? Hey... But those were only dummy grenades. Isn't that right, Sarge? That's right, but... What do you mean? Oh, what a jerk I am. You could have at least told me. Well, I'm sorry, Bert. I thought you heard. Yeah, sure. Thanks for the ride, Sarge. I won't forget it. Hey, Bert, come back. But he took off, his face red with embarrassment. I continued with the tour, and at the end of it, saw the blue socks off on their homeward-bound bus. Hey, Sarge, thanks for showing us what goes into the making of a soldier. I think I'm speaking for just about all of us when I say that you better start ordering some uniforms that we can get into when we take our blue socks uniforms off for good. Yeah, you bet, Perkins. For these uniforms, it takes the man to fit them. But I'm sure you will when the time comes. So long. That evening, I drove downtown to deliver a new issue of Special Services Dance Recordings to the USO Club. And on the way back, I saw the very guy I was thinking about, Bert Taylor walking down Main Street toward the bus station with a suitcase in his hand. Hey, Bert! Oh. What is it, Sergeant? Come on, come on, sit down for a minute. Unless you're in a hurry. Oh, all right. Are oh, you going on a trip? You could call it that. A long trip. Uh -huh. Where to? Anywhere. Just as long as it's away from here. Oh, well, is that what you wanted to know? Are you satisfied now? Uh, stay here, Bert. I want to say something to you. It'll only take a minute. First, your dad's one of the finest and on-the-level men I've ever met. Second, you're making a mistake in running away. That won't solve anything. And third, I know the real reason you're doing this. Oh, yeah? Yeah. You're a big fella, Bert. 180 pounds of brawn. And somehow you've got the idea that because you're big on the outside... You have to try to live up to it. But you've been doing it the wrong way, kid. Anyhow, there's no need to prove it. Not after what happened out there on the post today. I say, Sarge, I, I know that I... That you did the right thing? No, no, I mean... Well, uh... Sure you did. And let me tell you something you don't know. The lieutenant that commanded that tank, the haymaker... Yeah? Well, he's a major now. And he arrived at the post just before we got to the grenade range. And he was driving past when you ran out to save your buddy. Oh, no. Oh, yes. I met him later. You know what he said? He said, meaning you, that that's the kind of man who'd fit right in with his crew. Well, okay, that's all I wanted to say. You can take it from there, Bert. Good night. Well, it's been a year since then. And here in the courthouse, 
There's a special ceremony that'll take place any minute now. A swearing in of the 1,000th enlistee from the town since our post was activated here. The town newspapers are covering the story, but the story behind the story is also important because the enlistee is Bert, and the administrator of the oath by special arrangement of the post special services headquarters will be the major who commanded the haymaker. And there he is now, raising his right hand and holding the Bible in the other. Repeat this after me. I, Bert Taylor, do solemnly swear. I, Bert Taylor, do solemnly swear. That I will bear true faith and allegiance. That I will bear As he true takes faith the oath, I see his father standing behind him, proud of his son. And in a way, I'm just as proud. That all statements given by me and stated in my records are true and correct. Hey, boy, congratulations. Well, congratulations, Bert. If there's anyone who has the makings of a soldier in him, it's you. Thanks, Sarge. I'm going to try. I hope one day I'll fit the uniform the way you do. Young men, today's United States Army is made up of skilled technicians and specialists who have learned their jobs in the world's finest military technical schools. And now, the Army is offering you even greater opportunities to join this elite group of young men and serve your country at the same time. It's called the Reserved for You Training Program, and it works this way. If you're a high school graduate of service age, visit your nearest United States Army recruiting station and apply for the Reserved for You Program stating your preferences of branch and training course. If you qualify and there's a vacancy in your choice, you are awarded a letter that guarantees you a reserved seat in the class. Now this is all before you enlist and there's no obligation whatsoever. Then, after you enlist and have your basic training, you are automatically enrolled in your school and begin your career as a highly skilled Army technician. Find out about it right away by visiting your nearest United States Army recruiting station and talking over the reserved for you training program. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center for the United States Army. This is Ralph Rowland inviting you to tune in this same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. Proudly we hail.